Hello and welcome to the second tutorial in this series and after importing our scene into Unreal 4 the next thing I want to show you is how to create a very simple interaction in our scene because the strength of Unreal 4 is not only in a walkthrough of the scene in real time photorealistic uh, walkthrough of an environment it also is in the interactions so if for instance I want to switch lights on or off in real time I can do that if I want to change furniture types in real time I can do that too change floor types and materials and open and close doors when I come near them everything that is an interaction can be done in Unreal 4 all of these interactions or animations are done in code now the beauty of Unreal 4 is that the code is a visual one so it's not a written code it's a code which is uh, uh, nodes that connect to one another so it's not unlike the material editor in 3d studio max that you connect nodes to in order to create a material i will show you this in the continuation of this tutorial but for now just know that everything that is interaction or animation is uh, done by code first thing we need to do is create an actor that we want to apply the code to so all these objects here in the scene are not actors they are just objects in the scene they are mesh actors they are not blueprint actors so there's no code on them so what I need to do in, in order to create an actor that I can manipulate is go in this menu here which is all the objects in the scene all the objects in memory in the file and hit the right button blueprint class and actor so I'm creating an actor which is a blueprint which is a coded actor that does what I want it to do let's call it lamp and let's double click it in order to go into this actors world so this world is where the actor lives I need to import uh, the lamp itself inside I need to do all the coding inside of this actor and let's just drop it in the scene and it will just work so first thing I want to do is import this lamp here into the actor in order to do this I need to find the mesh that reprises this uh, lamp that's this lamp is made of so in order to do that I'm going to do to go to the folder that was created when I imported the scene in my case is exp which is export that's the name of the file I gave in 3d studio max if you export it using a different name that name will be the name of the folder so if we go into here you have geometry where all the meshes are you have materials all the materials you exported here and you have the textures that you exported so we need to go to geometry and these two are our lamp so I'm going to click one and control click the other and drag them inside the actor to this component list here so I'm going just to leave them here and as you can see the object is inside of our actor so now let's make it bigger and I want to place the lamp correctly so let's go to the front viewport now this red line represents zero which is the floor so I need to take this one up to almost zero like so and this one up here now if when you go up with these objects they snap like this to grid what you need to do and you don't want them to snap what you need to do is click here enable and disable snapping so just disable them and move it freely so let's place them here let's go to the perspective viewport and the lamp is placed correctly let's compile which is uh, save the code in other words and save the actor so let's close it up let's go back and that is our actor so now I can just drag and drop it wherever I want in the scene so let's say here next thing I want to do is I want to delete this scene uh, this lamp that is not a blueprint actor from the scene because I can't animate it so I'm going to choose this one and this one and delete them from the scene next uh, what you delete from the scene is not does not disappear it still stays here in this menu so you can go inside and you still see the lamp but it disappeared from this menu so which are the objects that in are in the world right now so you can uh, have objects that are not inside the world right now that you can use in a later time that are not in the world so these are the objects that are in the world and these are the objects that are in memory let's say in the file itself 
All right. So this is our actor. I will move it to about the same place that our lamp was. So let's go to the top viewport and place it here. All right. So the lamp is in place. Let's go back to the uh, uh, our lamp actor. And this is the coding section. We still don't need that. We will get to it in a minute. We need the viewport. So let's go to the viewport. And you can see the lamp shade and the lamp in place. Everything is fine. Next thing I want to make sure is if I click on this object here, uh, movability, you have three options here. You have static, stationary and movable. Every object, light and everything in uh, Unreal it has these three options that you need to choose from. So movable is an object that will move physically. Now our lamp will not move physically. It will only turn on and off. So movable is not what we want here. Stationary is uh, something that is stationary, but will change, uh, let's say color or uh, uh, brightness or things like that. Uh, it can, uh, if uh, we're talking about a light, the light will come on and off. You need to set it to stationary. Static is something that is static, that will not move, not change at all. So you can change its color and you can change uh, its texture, but you cannot move it and you cannot flip it on and off in the case of a lamp. So uh, most of the objects and lights in our scene will be static because when they are set to static, they affect the global illumination, which is what we want. We want photorealistic global illumination like in V-Ray. So only if we don't have a choice, we will set it to stationary or movable. So now we will set our lamp to static and our shade also to static. All right, so both of them are static. The next thing I want to add to this actor is the light itself. I want there to be a light that will shine on the wall. So I'm going to add a component here and I'm going to write light. And I have a couple of lights here, a directional light, which is like a sun. I have point light, which is what we need. A rectangle light, which is like a V-ray light, which is like a plane. Skylight and spotlight. So we need a, a point light. It's a lamp. So I'm going to take a point light. And as you can see, it is now a child of the lampshade. We don't want it to be a child of the lampshade. So let's just take it and drag it on top of the default scene root. So now it's a, not a child of anything. All right, let's take it up a little bit. Let's place it in the center. And let's go to the front. Place it in the center of the light bulb. So here. And let's go to the left. It's fine. And top, it's fine. All right, so now it's in place. If we minimize this and look in the scene, you can see that the light is shining brightly on the wall. So it has a strong, very strong effect. In order to control the brightness of the light, I will choose the light in the viewport and I will go to the intensity here. It's 5000 uh, unitless. So I want it to be with units. So I'm going to choose candles. 5000 candles is crazy bright. So I'm going to take it down to something like two candles. It's a bit dark. So let's say five. All right. So five candles is on. Our light is now on. Okay, next thing I want to set in the viewport, which is the last thing I want to set in the viewport, is a perimeter. So if I walk in the scene, let's say, let's close this actor down, let's play. If I walk in the scene, I want, uh, when I walk a certain distance from the floor, to have a text that tells me hit F in order to lamp, uh, for the lamp to turn on. And also, if I'm too far away from the lamp, if I hit F, nothing will happen. So I need to set a parameter where all these functions will happen. And if I'm as a character outside of the parameter, nothing will happen. All right, in order to do that, let's go back into our actor, back to the viewport, and add the last thing called collision box. So let's write box. You have box collision. So this is... Uh, the parameter where uh, when the actor, when the player comes inside the perimeter, these, uh, whatever you code will happen. So let's go to the front viewport and make it bigger. This is the scale portion. So let's scale it up, scale it up here. Let's, this is the move. Let's move it up top.
scale this way and let's see in our world so if I go inside this square here the functions will start working okay so let's make it a bit bigger let's say like this and like this and a bit taller so it will intersect with the ceiling here like so all right so now we have a parameter when we go inside the parameter we can start hitting the f key in order to it sets the light on or off when we are outside of the parameter we cannot do anything with this code okay so let's go back into our blueprint actor let's go to the perspective now we have everything we need in the viewport next is start coding don't be alarmed it's very very simple and intuitive so let's go to the event graph this is the coding section of uh, uh, this uh, blueprint so now what I want to do is when I go inside this parameter here all right I want there to be a text that says hit F in order to uh, turn on the light all right and when I go outside this parameter I want the text to disappear so first things first I forgot I need to add text in the viewport so let's add the text here add component text text render and here you have the text let's rotate it like so 90 degrees let's see in the world how it looks let's rotate it back like so 90 degrees okay so this is way too big and it's not in place so let's go to the front viewport and take it up even to the left viewport yeah here's the text stick it up on top of the lamp let's make it much smaller so the size is world size here let's make it five and let's write what we want so press f to switch light on off all right so you have the whole text here now the text intersects with the uh, wall here so i need to move it a bit inside like so let's make it even smaller four okay so now we have the text now if i compile and save let's try playing this the text is always on all right never mind if i'm inside the parameter or outside the text is on now i need to code it let's go back to the actor and go to the event graph and now i want uh, for this code here to tell the software when i'm inside the parameter the text will be on when i'm outside the parameter the text will be off so let's go back to the viewport and turn this text off for the beginning because i'm starting the level outside of the parameter so the text is off and now let's start coding when I want to a certain object to do something, I need to tell it here in the blueprint. So I'm going to take the text render, which is the object I want to do something, and drag it inside. Okay, so we have the text render. This is our object that we want to turn on and off. Now let's click and drag, and I want to set it to on. So we'll just hit set visibility to on new visibility is on so the text render will become on now this isn't connected to anything so we don't have anything to connect it to that will tell it to become visible so this will essentially do nothing for now but there are three nodes here that are by default uh, inside this event graph one of them is called event actor begin overlap so what this does is when we as an actor overlap this collision box that we created this event will start firing so I want to connect this what we created here let's move it down let's move these two back I want to connect event actor begin overlap so this event when an actor comes inside of our uh, collision box we want to set the visibility of the text to on let's compile save and try this very very simple code go to play 
no text when I go inside text appears go outside the text is still on but it appeared it wasn't there when we started to play now in order for it to disappear when we go back we need to continue coding so let's go to the lamp it's very intuitive event actor begin overlap so the other event we want is event actor end overlap so when the actor goes outside ends overlap with this collision box something will happen what will happen set visibility to off so the visibility will become off so let's take this node here control c control v is copy and paste like any other software the target so visibility of what will become on and off of the text render of the text so we need to connect it to the target uh, if we don't connect it to the target the set visibility will not know what to, to turn off visibility of what to turn off so next thing we want to do here is the visibility is on when we begin overlap when we end overlap the visibility is off so now we need an event actor event actor end overlap all right so it's the same as this one but end now let's connect it so when we end the overlap the event of ending of the lap starts the visibility of the text will be set to off compile save let's see what we have here when we go inside our collision box text on outside text off and we coded our first code in unreal not that bad is it now let's go inside outside all right next thing is the light itself we want the lights to turn on and off when we hit the f key so let's code that let's go back to the actor and uh, uh, create a new event so we had an event that begins overlap and ends overlap now the event we want is when i press the f key so let's hit the right key right mouse button and press f key and it will continue and you will see here keyboard events when i press f i can make it every button i want all buttons are here you can make it i f g whatever you want so i'm going to go with f so just hit it here the, uh, if it's red it's an event so when f is pressed what will happen is one one second before that let's go back to the viewport and turn this light Oh, one more thing the text render is a child of the box collision it doesn't really matter but I like everything to be in the same hierarchy not a child of anything so just take the text drag it to the default scene root so now nothing is a child of nothing now let's select the point light and let's turn it off so in the viewport you have the light intensity on 5 I want to set it to 0 no light all right so we set it to 0 because when I begin the scene, I want there to be no light. Uh, only when I press F, the light will turn on. So let's go to the back to the event graph. When I hit the F key, now what we want to do is uh, to affect the point light. So like we took the text to affect it, we need to take the point light, drag it in, and from it, drag out and set intensity. So we want to set the intensity of the point light to 5. When do we want to set the intensity to 0.5? When the event of the F key pressed is active. So we're going to connect when I press the F key, set the point light to 5 intensity. It is very simple. Let's compile, save, and try this. Now if I play the game, I go inside, you have text, outside no text, hit F key, nothing happens so let's see why not let's go back here by default unreal doesn't recognize keyboard shortcuts that are created inside a uh, blueprint actors so in order for uh, the software to recognize uh, our input from the keyboard we need to add an uh, input so what we want, want to do when event actor begin overlap sets the visibility of the text to on and then continues to input to enable input now whose input do we want to enable so let's say we have uh, 
a multiplayer game. There are like a hundred of different actors or players in the scene. So you don't want every player to be able to open a, a light or close the light. So you need to tell the software which player uh, his input will be affecting this actor. So the player is us. In the architectural visualization field, it's always us. We won't have two players in the scene. So uh, when player controller, you have this node player controller, it will always be, let's drag it out. Utility. I think it's a array. No, it's game. Okay, it's always get player controller. So when we set player controller, player is us. Player index zero is the main character, which is us. So always when you have in architectural visualization player controller, always connect a get player controller player index zero to it. If you don't connect it, it will not know uh, whose input to enable, so it won't work. Okay, so what we have here, when we intersect, when we begin overlap of the collision object of this field uh, collision box here, the visibility of the text will become on text will become on and then it will continue and enable the input of the player so now when I hit F inside it will work let's go inside text on F turns on the light okay so this is working next thing if I hit F again nothing happens the light will not turn off and why is that let's go back to the coding that is because we didn't code that we only have when you press F light intensity becomes five that's it we don't have light intensity becomes zero again so we need to make a switch out of it a flip-flop switch so every time you hit f it becomes either five or zero so in order to do that let's drag from this pressed f pressed button drag out and hit flip One second flip flop you see it connected automatically this one and the A to the set intensity. So this flip-flop is when you press the F button first time, A will play. So set intensity to 5, 4 point light. When you press the F key again, B will play. So let's copy this, copy and paste, control C, control V and set intensity to zero. Whose intensity do you want to set to zero? The point lights intensity. And when we want this intensity to be set to zero, in B. So the second time we press the F key. And the third time you press the F key, it's A again. Fourth time B, A, B, A, B. So it's a switch. All right. So now let's compile, save, and start playing. Let's go inside. Text on, switches on, switches off. On, off. Now, last thing we want to do, if I go outside of this parameter and I hit F, it will still switch on and off. We don't want that because let's say we have like five lights in the scene or you want to do a different inter interaction for the F key for changing the floor, let's say, okay? So if I hit F again, it will just change the light also. Uh, so it will change the floor, but it will also switch the light on and off. So I want to set this uh, light switching to be uh, only effective when I'm inside the box collision. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to the lamp uh, actor blueprint and I'm going to do one last thing. So we have uh, when actor begin overlap the collision box, it sets the visibility of the text to on and it sets enable input for our player to also on. The, the, uh, the input is enabled. Now, I didn't disable the input when we, the actor ends overlap, when it goes, when I go outside of this collision box. So in order to do this, it is very simple. Just drag it out. And like we did the enable, just hit disable. So you have disable input. Same thing as this, just disables the input. Disable input for which player? For our zero player, for us. So player controller. And compile save and now if i try playing this go inside hit f light turns on and off when i go outside hit f nothing happens so go inside turns on and off and text also turns on and off so this is a very basic uh, understanding of the unreal 4 
a blueprint coding language. It's very simple, very intuitive. Don't be afraid if you didn't 100% understand it. It takes a couple of days, but I promise you it is very intuitive. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we'll try a couple of more interactions. Uh, let's say changing the color of the floor if I hit a key or changing uh, the type of sofa. All right. And then we'll get to uh, more uh, graphical things like uh, you have a very dirty, like a splotchy wall here. So we can fix that and uh, make a higher resolution global illumination. Uh, so the scene will look much more photorealistic and uh, set better reflections and things like that. We'll do that after we learn basic blueprint uh, interactions. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.